You know, I've been hearing a lot of conflicting stories lately. Everyone seems to have their own version of the truth. So I decided I'd try to sit down and figure out some things that are really true. I'm gonna write a novel. Yeah. It was a case like any other. Bill Dry. It was a dark and stormy night, a little too stormy. I was sitting at my desk filing papers, contemplating what the missus was cooking for dinner. I'd had a rough day and was in need of a hearty meal. Roast, pot roast. That's what I was craving. Unfortunately for my stomach, my secretary Barb walked in to tell me that I had an urgent call on the line. Who is it? It's Constable Stan, sir. Ah, Constable Stan. I knew the man well. We had worked together on the case of the missing octopus. Sir, I've got some unsettling news. We need you to come down to where Fort meets Lexington. It's... I'm afraid we've got a murder on our hands. Sounds like it's time to forget about the pot roast and discover the truth. By the way, the name's Dry. Phil Dry, Private Eye. His name is Dr. Tracy. He was a professor here at Portland University. The cause of death seems to be blood force trauma, but we'll have to turn the corner to be sure. Who discovered him? It was I, Dr. Edwards. I was working down the hall, teaching my math class. Then I heard a commotion. I stopped my lecture on alternative forms of gasoline and rushed down the hall. But when I got here, alas, he was no more. Hmm, the man was shady. A little too shady. I had met him before at a bagel stand and knew that he and Dr. Tracy worked closely with each other. They were masterminds, always teaming up to make scientific breakthroughs. I didn't trust him. Not yet. There was one more piece of evidence that we found on the desk in an ashtray. I can only make out a few words of the scrap. I noticed a name and an address. It was difficult to read, as it seemed to have been written in crayon. Tony Starch. Have you heard of Tony Starch? No, I haven't, but we did get the address. 483 Hashbrown Court, New York. I'd pay him a visit later. For now, a visit to the morgue was needed. So I've discovered the cause of death. It seems he was hit on the head with the book, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> a classic case. Who would want to commit such a heinous crime? Did you find anything else? Um, yes. There were traces of potato skins under his fingernails, but I don't think that's of any importance. Okay. Thank you. I'll give you a ring if I need anything else. This case was chilly. A little too chilly. After a thorough investigation, I narrowed my search to four suspects. His wife, his sister, his colleague, and this Tony Starch guy. I was ready to interview them, private dry style. The first suspect was early. A little too early. Barb, why is she so early? Sorry, sir. I thought your 9 o'clock was a 6. I had the paper upside down. I've been sitting here for three hours waiting for you, and I missed my hair appointment. My apologies, ma'am. She isn't always the sharpest barb in the wire. I don't know why you're interviewing me. I loved him. Do you really think I would kill my own husband? I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. It's standard procedure. Where were you on the night of the murder? Well, I hadn't seen him for several days. I made mashed potatoes for dinner one night, and I burnt them. And he must have been upset because he left, and I, I haven't seen him since. I figured he must have been working on a project. 
but I never knew it would be his last. Was this normal? Was he working with Professor Edwards? Well, he often worked on experiments for days, but he was alone this time. Hmm. I'd have to think on this one. Thanks for coming in. I'll be in touch with you in the next few days. Good evening, Miss Tracy. Uh, John was your older brother, correct? Yes, my oldest brother. My only brother. In fact, there were only two of us. I understand that you come from a wealthy family with a very large, small fortune. Your father has recently died, and your mother is on her deathbed. Had you and John discussed the inheritance? Well, naturally, as the firstborn, he would inherit everything. But, I guess that's not happening anymore, is it? She seemed greedy. A little too greedy. Where were you at 7.20 p.m. Friday night? I was at a gala in Franklin. It was a benefit to raise money for my trip to the south of France this summer. That'll be all, Miss Charlotte. I'm free to go. One last suspect interview tonight. We had already met. Dr. Edwards was right on time. Browsers in love, then money, then fame. Give me truth, detective. Okay. Mr. Edwards. Dr. Edwards. Dr. Edwards. Did you know the latest project Mr. Tracy was working on? Wise men talk because they have something to say. Fools because they have to say something. All right. I see you're clamming up. Maybe you two were cooking up something together, and you wanted all the credit. My shoe is off, my foot is cold. I have a bird I like to hold. My hat is old, my teeth are gold. And now my story is all told. Detective. He was mysterious. A little too mysterious. He has a motive, and it wasn't half bad. But what was this project? And how did potatoes fit into it? I need to ponder this more. It was time for me to interview the most promising lead, Tony Starch. I went up to his facility at the address that was found with Tracy. Starch was an intriguing man. And he had potato all over his apron. Your name and address were found at the crime scene. Crime scene? That's why he hasn't been answering my texts. What happened? Don't play the fool with me. You know what happened. You're right. I've been working on a secret project with Tracy. We've discovered... Never mind. I swore to secrecy with him. I guess I could show you something. Dr. Tracy and I have been working on sources for gasoline. Tracy knew that Dr. Edwards wasn't going anywhere with all his watered-down nonsense about celery gasoline, so he came to me and to begin to experiment. After a dinner mishap, he came to me, and we began to research. Within two days, we had grown a full potato crop, and it was time to test our theory. We had figured out a new source for gasoline, potatoes. This would end the need for big gasoline companies like Exoff, PQ, and Shield. We were going to unveil our new company, Starch Industries, of which I would be the CEO. However, it looks like I may have to launch this alone. All that sounded like an impressive motive to me. I decided to take him into my office for further questioning. Good. With Tracy out of the way, we just need to take care of Tony Starch. And with him gone, there'll be no need to worry about alternative fuel sources. I know where Starch is right now. He's being interrogated in his office by Private Dry. Let's go take care of this once and for all. Good. <laughs> 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 Excuse me, sir, this is a private interrogation. This is my key suspect in the Tracy case. Aha! That's where you're wrong, detective. You see, all this time, the suspect you were looking for was right under your nose. It was me, president of Exoff Gas Corporation. And would you like to know why? Because with an alternative gasoline source, all of my 
profits would go down the drain. I would have too much competition. So if I got rid of Starch and Tracy, I'd have no one to compete against me. Unfortunately, Private Dry, you've meddled as well, so I'll have to take care of you and Starch today. I think you'll find that difficult. A little too difficult. You see, a few months back, I noticed some shady goings on at the Exop Corporation. So I hired this dame I knew from Scotland Yard to go and investigate the place. Thankfully, our two cases lined right up. Good work, Agent Carter. While Private Dry was investigating Tracy's death, I acquired Count Von X's trust. It wasn't hard. I worked day and night as a double agent, and I finally realized his need for control and power. This case had a lot of false trails, a lot of dead ends, but in the end, we discovered the truth. And I wonder if that pot roast is still warm. And so Bill Dry went home and ate some hot roast. Eat and Keep close. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. What are you doing in my office? Ah, uh, uh <laughs> sorry. I'll leave. Well, this is, this is weird. A little too weird. <laughs> <laughs>